morning. Am I on? Is that working? Okay. Uh, welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Thank you for being here. I um, hope you've noticed something's already different. Uh, this morning, Rebecca is bringing us the gospel and the sermon. So, um, this is her first sermon in this setting. So, we will all pray for her uh, calm, peace. It's all good. It's all good. I've already read it. It's a good sermon. You will enjoy it. And it is definitely spirit-filled. So, um, so you may notice also that our, our normal organist is not here today. Wayne had a minor medical procedure earlier this week, and he's just not quite up to being here this morning. So thank you, Bob, for uh, giving us the gift of music this morning. Um, but because of that, we need to make one change to our agenda for the day. Um, after the Apostles' Creed, instead of canticle number 14, we're going to do canticle number 15. It's just on the next page, but we'll be, number 15 and number 20 later are both to be sung like a psalm. So we will just sing those in unison, and Eric and I and the choir will do our best to lead you, so just we will make a joyful noise. So, um, Okay. Oh, Susan. Where is she? I forgot to print out what you sent me. I'm sorry. Help me remember what I was going to announce for you. So, as I think most of you know, we have been supporting uh, Strong Life Ministries, which is a, a small homeless ministry in, in the Hickory community that's been doing great work for the last few years. Um, they've uh, recently asked us, they're looking for men's pants, size 32 to 38, and men's shoes, size 9 to 12. Did I say that right? Um, not dress shoes, but like hiking shoes or running shoes. So... Um, if you would bring those to the church over the next week or two, we will collect them and we can get them over there. So, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Please do uh, take note of the, um, the rest of the announcements in your bulletin. I would just draw your attention to the Miller's mic is done and that is ready for pickup in the back. Um, are there any other announcements that I need to make? Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll do that in just a second. Is it? Is this? Is this the annual? Just, just so, just routine. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, if you didn't hear, for those of you online and if you didn't hear, Teresa, um, every year, if you are a Thrivent customer, you have an opportunity to direct what are called choice dollars, okay? Choice dollars are um, a part of the profits that the Thrivent company makes, and it allows its customers to say, I want my choice dollars to go to charity of your choice. If you don't tell them to send it to your church, then the corporation will decide where they go. So if you would like your choice dollars to come to Miller's, you have until the end of March. Is that right? I think so. I didn't yeah. see the date. Yeah. The last few years, it's, it's been March 31st. So um, sooner would be better if you would like Miller's to receive those funds. Um, there have been some years that our church has benefited up to $3,000 from just those choice dollars as part of our budget. So... Um, if you would contact your Thriving agent, they can talk you through that process. Uh, the second thing that Teresa said was um, our young friend Grayson, uh, who, as you know, has beaten quite a few uh, significant medical issues in his young, young life, um, is going up for an annual scan this week to ensure that his... Uh, this is a cancer scan, yeah. Um, so... Uh, just to ensure that he remains uh, in remission. So 
let's all uh, lift up Grayson in prayer. The Lord be with you. Mighty and merciful Father, you are the great healer. We know that you have been a part of Grayson's life since before he was born. Certainly, your grace has been manifested in his life already. We would ask you, Lord, that this week as Grayson goes for this scan, that you would continue to be, uh, that you would continue to keep your hand on his shoulder, that your, your healing touch would remain in him, and that you would continue to let him uh, hear once again this year good news from this scan, if it is your will. Uh, we would ask you that you would make sure that he feels your presence, that his family feels your presence, and that they would all know that you have a hand in all of the good that has happened in his life up till this point. Let us all remember to hold him in prayer for the rest of this week, and we look forward to hearing the good news that he is once again healthy and ready to continue to serve in your kingdom. We pray all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. All right. So, I don't normally do this, but we have a, a large and significant number of visitors this morning. So, let's just take a moment and just greet each other in Christ's name. Stand as you feel you're, you're uh, able to, but just, just say hello to those seated around you, okay? Good morning. Good morning, girls. How are you? Are you going to help with noisy offering today? Okay. Just watch for Rebecca will call you up, okay? I'm glad you're here. So, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you with us. <clears throat> All right. Are there any other announcements? Okay, so I would just ask you to take a quiet moment, prepare your hearts and minds for worship, and then we will sing our entrance hymn. First hymn is number 294 in your green book. My hope is built on nothing less. I invite you to stand as you are able.
He was, he is, and he is to come. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He created all things. By his will they came to be. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. Worthy to take the scroll and break its seals. By his blood he purchased for God. People of every race and tongue, of every folk and nation. Christ made of them a kingdom. And priests to serve our God. And they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lasting. Amen. Please turn to Canticle 15 in your green book. <laughs> seated for the lesson. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him. 
and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offering, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. We'll now sing Psalm 15 responsively by whole verse. The second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. St. Paul writes, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards, Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, 
And when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the noisy offering. All right. So the noisy offering. Hey. (laughs) Have you done? Yeah, I'm scared. Okay. So the noising offering is something we do to help with outreach in our community and show that all of us have a special part to play in the church. There's one more kid, okay. guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And then you guys, get a church, get a bag. Good job. All right. Thanks. Where does it go? 
Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Greetings, my brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm very blessed and honored to be here with you all this morning. As many of you know, I've had quite a journey that the Lord has brought me on to get here. I did not grow up as a Lutheran, nor did I receive my degree from a Lutheran seminary, but I did have some Lutheran influence growing up. My grandmother was a very devout Lutheran, and she had a profound impact on my faith. I wouldn't doubt it if she prayed fervently that I would become a Lutheran. So if you want evidence that God hears our prayers, well, they probably had something to do with part of the reason I'm standing here today. Mama Lean, as she was affectionately called, was a play on her name, Marilyn. She was an amazing woman with a deep faith and strength that carried her through many hardships in her life. When I saw that one of her favorite verses was the Old Testament reading for today, I was overwhelmed with seeing how God's word serves as a constant and never-changing source of guidance, encouragement, and truth for Christians of all generations. The words that God spoke through the prophet Micah in Israel thousands of years ago have been preserved and traveled to us now by God's loving providence to instruct us in our own individual lives. During the prophet Micah's time, Israel and Judah were being confronted with their rebellion against God. They had broken their covenant with God by disobeying his law, and he was not pleased. Cruelty, unfortunately, is nothing new to this world ever since Adam and Eve disobeyed God's commandment and ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Sin has run rampant through the world in biblical times as it does now. There was bloodshed, thievery, injustice and idolatry. Humanity's sinful nature at its finest was taking advantage of others without any empathy and turning their backs on the one true God. Injustice was everywhere as people bowed to false idols and had no regard for their neighbor. This doesn't sound too different from what we find in the world today, does it? Just turn on the news to see tales of crime, heartache, and bloodshed. Crooked politicians will lie to their followers to gain power and cover up schemes that serve to hurt those in our society that need help the most. There are those in power, whether it be a boss at work or a dictator over a nation, that seek to serve their own self-interest over doing what is right in God's eyes. All I described may be the way of the world, but God has different expectations for his covenant people. The book of Micah escalates to the passage that we read today, where a scene similar to a court battle is being waged between God and his people. The people of Israel and Judah love to profess that they were followers of the one true God, and yet they did the opposite of what God had instructed them to do. Consequences were coming, and all of creation was called to bear witness to God's faithfulness compared to Israel's rebellion. God openly declares that he is the one who has been faithful to Israel throughout their history. He has kept his side of the covenant agreement. He freed them from slavery in Egypt and sent leaders to guide them. Time and time again, God had proven that he is just and merciful. God is taking care of them even when they did not deserve it. And now why would he do all of this? This makes me think of what we read in 1 Corinthians that the acts of God seem foolish to the ways of the world. Why would this almighty and powerful God continue to show mercy to people who take him for granted? We get the answer in verse five, quote, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. He did it because he loved them and he wanted to show them his character. One scholar phrased it like this, indeed his character as shown in Israel's history is not only holy and righteous, but also gracious, self-giving, and compassionate. Despite all that he has done, God's people were still placing their wants, desires, and pride above him. 
Israel and Judah arrogantly defend themselves by asking a bunch of rhetorical questions in verses 6 and 7 to see what else they could possibly do to earn God's forgiveness. They escalate the value of their sacrifices, thinking that if they did enough extravagant things, he'd get off their backs. Yet the attitude behind their response shows that they were missing the whole point that God is making. It's a point that we often tend to miss as well in our own walk with God. We can't do anything to earn God's forgiveness. It is given to us through what Jesus did on the cross. Our very faith is nothing short of a gift of mercy. When we come up to take communion or when we are baptized, we aren't doing anything for God. Rather, he is the one that is giving these gifts to us. When Martin Luther passed away, it is said that a small piece of paper was found in his pocket with one, scr- with one sentence scribbled on it in his handwriting. And it said, we are all beggars. This is true. This is where we get into a well-known passage, Micah 6, 8. Now, this verse is the one that was one of my grandmother's absolute favorites. As a good Lutheran, she even wrote this out and taped it in a place where she knew she'd see it every day, on the inside of her cabinet door where she kept her coffee mugs. As her granddaughter, I can say that I am so blessed to have a grandmother who sought to live out this verse in her life. She modeled that for me in countless ways that I hope to mimic in my own life. My grandmother did not only profess her faith, but she practiced it it from her heart. God does not want mindless robots to follow him. He wants people who love him and obey him because of his love and mercy, and not because we think we can just get something out of it if we do. Like the Israelites, we cannot do anything to earn God's forgiveness. They thought that God could be appeased like their false gods through mindlessly throwing enough sacrifices his way. The prophet Micah almost laughs at that thought and lists three simple traits of a person that is devoted to following God and keeping his commandments. They do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with their God. All three of these attributes beckon us to be examples of God's character in the world. First, what does it mean to do justice? Well, one of my favorite professors stated that we can do justice by correcting injustice. When someone is wrongfully accused of something, we stand up and we tell the truth. When we come across people who are hungry and homeless, we feed them and help them find shelter. When a family is affected by a natural or man-made disaster, we work with organizations such as the NALC's disaster relief to help them rebuild their lives. I have witnessed this church do justice in so many ways. We send out flood buckets, assemble blessing bags, and have events such as the Fresh Eyes for Mission Summit where we take an honest look at what else we can be doing to share God's light in the dark places around us. As Christ's disciples, we also act with honesty and integrity in every facet of our lives. When a cashier forgets to ring up an object, go back and let them know. If we make a mistake, seek to actively correct it. Whether it is in big or small ways, we can do justice. We show God's concern for others and his desire to right the wrongs that happen in this world. And second, we love kindness. The Hebrew word that is used for kindness here is chesed, which can also be translated as mercy or loving kindness. This means that we give mercy to help those that have done nothing to deserve it because we too have been the unworthy recipients of God's kindness and mercy through Jesus Christ. We do justice, the first virtue, joyfully and eagerly. We recognize that we are gifted with the privilege to show mercy and kindness. We should want to care for those in need and serve one another. One scholar writes, to love Hesed presumes that one will practice this faithful, loving, divinely modeled care for others but it also calls God's people to cherish the virtue, and thus the God who, it is, who is its source at the deepest level of their beings. Our kindness should radiate forth from our hearts that have been restored by God as we are being molded to look more and more like his son. And third, we walk humbly with our God. C.S. Lewis described humility as not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. We don't need to go around and degrade ourselves to be humble, but we should realize our position before God. We cannot do justice and love kindness without humility. Walking humbly with our God is the opposite of what this world wants us to do. 
It was the opposite of the selfishness and the pride that the Israelites were displaying during Micah's time. One scholar observed that what was being condemned was not sacrifice as appointed by God, but sacrifices as a substitute for obedience. True worship is not a matter of outer attitudes, but the inner disposition of the heart and spirit. Another declared that humility is an inescapable consequence of a person's dependence on God's grace. Micah addresses the audience as, oh man, when discussing what the God of the universe wants from us to help them to remember their humble position before their creator and redeemer. There is no room for pride. We are always utterly dependent on our just and merciful God. Granted, Mamaline also did not like a, a lot of attention on herself, so sorry, Mamaline. For her funeral that she had meticulously planned out ahead of time, she said that she did not want a lot of people getting up and talking about her. She wanted the focus to be on praising God through hymns, ones that she played on the organ in her church for over 40 years, and hearing God's word that had guided her throughout her life. My grandmother, she was definitely not a perfect person. She was a sinner just as much as everyone else. She could be pretty stubborn and opinionated at times. The difference in her life that set her apart as one of God's people is that she had been saved through gra the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God had transformed her to live out her baptism daily whenever she could. She did justice by quietly self-sacrificing to help those in need. She loved kindness by taking care of others even when it was an inconvenience to herself. And lastly, she walked humbly with her God by not seeking to give herself glory and attention, but by doing what was right in the background so God would receive all the praise and credit. And although we will all do these things imperfectly, God is still overflowing with mercy to help us keep trying. When we display the attributes listed in Micah 6, 8, we display the character of Christ to the world. For the sake of time, I won't go into it now. But I would invite you to look back over the readings and see how these three attributes of doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God relates to the Beatitudes that Christ taught us about in the Gospel reading for today. I can't think of a better way to further explain what God truly wants from us than what is said in Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So, my dear brothers and sisters, may we be transformed into the likeness of Christ versus that of the world around us. May we seek to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God in everything we do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
called together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us now offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy Spirit, you are the Lord and giver of life. As citizens of the reign of God, we know well the blessedness which we have been given. May we be a vehicle of blessing for those who have yet to know of your grace. Fill your church with power and equip us for all good works. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Creator, you give us the seasons and times of weather transitions that sustain the cycles of life and death. Through this winter season, may the ground be renewed in its fallowness. Provide adequate moisture for the spring planting and growing, whether through rain or snow. May the creatures of earth, sea, and sky find adequate food supplies and shelter in harsh winter weather. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of righteousness, guide the leaders of nations that they may be peacemakers and messengers of reconciliation and hope. Bring hope and healing to the lowly, oppressed, and downtrodden. May our care for them be a sign of your inbreaking reign. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you are a strengthening and sustaining presence for all of your people. Pour out your blessed presence for those suffering from depression, illness, poverty, or injustice, especially those on our prayer list, those we name now in our hearts, and those known only to you. May they who are poor in spirit remain confident that you are a faithful God who remembers your children in every situation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of power and authority over the creation, grant that we would be humble in our words and actions as we seek to prepare the way for your kingdom coming into our midst. Watch over all who share the good news, evangelists, teachers, preachers, and all the baptized in Christ. Bless Bishop Dan and his staff, Dean Nathan, Pastor Todd, Pastor Nelson, Pastor Henry, your unworthy servant, and all clergy in the Carolinas Mission region. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, be with our brothers and sisters whose congregations are discerning the call for a new pastor, especially Christ United, St. James, and Mount Calvary Lutheran Churches. Assure them of your Holy Spirit's presence throughout the call process and guide us to be good neighbors to them during their transition. Bless their interim pastors as they lead them through this season of change. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll now sing Canticle number 20. <clears throat> Bearing the human likeness, revealed in human shame, he humbled himself in obedience, accepting death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has raised him to the heights, and bestowed on him the name of all names, that at the name of Jesus every name should bow.
in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.